So this recording is just to help you with your analysis for your representation of teenager task. So first of all, you need to state the point that you're making about the video or the clip and link that to your thesis statement. So for example, um, the Breakfast Club, in the Breakfast Club, the stereotype of the nerd demonstrates or links to my thesis statement proving that all nerds are losers. You'll then need to use techniques to prove this. So this is shown through the character's costume, a big baggy nerdy jersey, jeans that don't really fit properly. You'll need examples of dialogue which prove that nerds are um, losers or represented as losers. You'll need examples of performance, shot size, camera angles, layout, lighting, language, etc. And spend a really good paragraph discussing how each of these techniques is used to prove your thesis statement. Um, next up, you will need to provide evidence, so stick the link to your video or article or whatever you're using in your um, essay, and then the hard part, you're gonna have to analyze it. So the first thing you need to do is to explain how the example relates to the representation you've chosen. If you've identified techniques clearly, then you should have already explained how your example links back to your thesis statement. So the example in the Breakfast Club of the Nerd proves that nerds are losers because he's picked on, he ultimately, his character doesn't change, he doesn't win by the end of the day. Next, you need to look at the um, context of the representation. So um, when was the representation made? What is the expected audience of the representation? Why was it made? What is the genre? So for example, if the genre is, it's a sitcom, it's obviously made for laughs. So the genre, in, is intended for comedy, the intended purpose is to make people laugh, the intended audience is people sitting, family sitting around together at five o'clock at night watching it, wanting to get a laugh. So examine this and discuss it. Next you need to identify the difference between what is shown by the representation and reality and use examples from reality. So for example, here you might say that um, in The Simpsons, Millhouse is portrayed as a nerd, as a loser, his, his life sucks, whereas in reality, you know, it's actually quite successful. And then pick some real examples. So talk about how the New Zealand Herald has portrayed um, any particular all blacks as heroes, but also um, they're nerds because they've got law degrees or they spend a lot of time at university. Or look at um, the way that nerds are bullied or look at that um, excellent example of the viral, the video that went viral with a with a nerd actually ended up beating up his bully. Um, yeah. Next, you'll need to do some research as to why the representation has occurred, and perhaps use a documentary or some reality TV as evidence as to why the representation has occurred. So, for example, if you're looking at um, teenagers being represented as, as um, anti-authority and reckless and crazy, you could look at the fact that this representation has occurred because the nuclear family is broken down, um, a, lot of a lot of children don't have role models, perhaps their parents are working all the time, um, we've got more... Yeah, have a look at all of those ideas and look at the fact that teenagers like to push boundaries and this is catered to by the media and marketing and advertising. So um, if you're looking, for example, at the, the, the teenage representation of girls and how they're portrayed as being superficial and fake, you might look at the fact that this is a marketing ploy to create a lack in the target audience to make them feel like they're lacking and that to, to overcompensate for this or to compensate for this, they need to go out and buy the latest product. They need to get the latest dress, the latest outfit, listen to the latest music. And the media taps into this. So this is perhaps why these stereotypes have been created and why they're used in the media. Next up, you need to be able to talk about the, um, the messages that have been created by the representation or the values that we take away from this representation. So all nerds are losers or all blonde girls are dumb or all teenagers are reckless. And then explain why the representation, the messages and these values have been created. So who's created them and why? So for example, if we look at a big movie, they might portray teenagers as reckless because they know that all teenagers like to push boundaries and they think this is perhaps going to create or attract a bigger target audience. This is going to make other teenagers want to watch this because it's it's the now, it's the new, it's the, it's the zeitgeist, and they're tapping into this to try and get more people to watch their film. Um, you also then have to look at how these values and these messages affect teenagers. 
and then use reality TV and documentary as an example. So, for example, teenagers being reckless, you can use the fact that teenagers have parties on a regular basis, which get bust and because too many people turn up and they destroy buildings and it's an absolute disaster. And yes, this has been done on Facebook and it's been in the news. So actually use the news to back this idea up. So next, um, what you need to start looking at is how these values and messages, or the representation itself, has affected society's wider view on teenagers. So for example, if society continuously sees teenagers behaving badly, then in a way it's going to make society expect teenagers to behave badly and to accept it. So for example, um, in Katy Perry's last Friday night music video, the parents come home at the end of the music video and they're not angry because, and they're almost like, oh well, you know, what can you expect? These are teenagers, they're expected to behave badly. So this is one way that our attitude changes. Or, um, for example, young children, they could look at these music videos and think, oh wow, when I grow up to be a teenager, I'm expected to be badly, and this becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy and they do end up behaving badly. Um, number nine asks you to comment on different readings um, of the example that, which could be taken by different groups in society. So um, have a look at children. They're a different group. Um, you could have a look at older people. You could have a look at different cultures. Um, you could have a look at um, different religions and look at the way that they would view this representation and what they would think about it. Um, next up, you should attempt to explain um, any selection or admission of material. And you really you should have started to look at this already through your analysis. So what's been left out? Yes, the fact that nerds are actually highly intelligent and end up being really rich and wealthy and successful later on in life is maybe something that's been left out. Or perhaps um, jocks are actually really caring people and are not really always bullies. So really look at this and once again, link it to examples in the real world. Um, um, next up, this is a really hard one. You've got to explain the connection between the representation and the worldview or th the way that the producer wants the audience to think. So do they have an agenda? And this could quite often be um, a financial agenda. Are they trying to make money? Are they putting across a representation to make money? It could be a political uh, agenda. Are they, have they created this representation for a political agenda? Um, for example, when we looked at The Lion King, we saw that the agenda was to make people dislike homosexual people. Or if we look at um, Bro Town, I mean, that's quite a contradiction because, yes, it's comedy, but it doesn't make the Maori people look very good now, does it? So that we've got to really examine the people who made that agenda. Quite racist, really. Um, yeah, so have a look at this and really analyse it. For some, there'll be a lot of detail. For others, the agenda could just be purely to make people laugh so that they could make money out of it. And finally, it's really important that you include your own opinion. Is this good? Is this bad? Evaluate it. Evaluate everything that you've discussed and evaluate the representation. And last of all, the link in steel. This is, you need to link your evaluation back to your thesis statement. And you are done. Please don't forget to get this into the library by 3.15 on Monday, and we will turn it into turnitin.com on Tuesday during class time. Thanks, guys. You're all awesome.